let's assume we find a property while we're doing our lead gen and it's worth $225,000 fair market value. Okay. We go to Zillow and we find out that the rate of appreciation is 4%. Um, let's assume here repairs are zero dollars on this one. And let's assume the fair market rent for the house is $1,650 a month. Okay. How would we find out what fair market rent would be? Maybe Zillow has it? PropStream does. PropStream has a rent, a rent estimate? Mm -hmm. What? Rental meter? Rental, rentometer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can call it that. Uh, do you call it Home Depot or the Home Depot? Depot. <laughs> I have no further comment. Uh, my dad calls it the Home Depot, and that bothers me a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go down to the Home Depot. Okay. Office Depot, Home Depot. 1650 a month over on Rento Meter. Dot com. Rick is right. Let's say it said sixteen fifty on one of those platforms. So we assume it's sixteen fifty fair market rent. Okay, two twenty five fair market value. We found that it was four percent. Now this is really technically just about all I need to know about the property in order to analyze a lease option deal. Is that correct? Anybody? Anybody got a comment about that? anybody anything else we need to know that's about it okay so you can see why i say lease option deals are pretty easy to analyze once you once you once it clicks for you it's a, it's pretty easy these are the only things you need to understand about the property itself okay in order to analyze so you can take a form like this which i'll make available to you you could fill this out and kind of help yourself visually if you need a little tool, a little cheat sheet to help you analyze a lease option deal. Use something like this, okay? So if I'm analyzing the property, I'm just going to go right through here, 225000 write it down, 4%. Okay, repairs, nothing, sixteen fifty a month. All right. Now, through my negotiations with the homeowner, let's say the asking price is... 240,000. Okay. He's asking 240,000. He also wants a down payment of $3,500. Okay. So we put that there. We could get him to do a 36. He or she is agreeable to a 36 month term. So we're going to write that down there. Are they in arrears? Okay. We don't talk about that much, but it's important to know if that homeowner is in arrears or not. Does anybody know what arrears means? Behind on payments. Yeah. Yeah. We might find a homeowner that's really motivated to do a lease option and we we don't ask the right questions and we don't find out that they're actually in arrears. Twelve, thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars. How I'm, come that I'm might so, be important? I'm sorry. What was that arrears again? Arrears is if the homeowner is behind on payments. Oh, okay. So, if he's behind on payments, let's assume a homeowner is behind on payments. This homeowner, let's assume he was behind on payments, ten thousand dollars. We would put 10000 down right there so we could remember that. But how would that affect the deal ultimately? Somebody speculate here and tell me what, how would that affect the deal later on? Well, you'd have to pay that. Somebody's going to have to pay the $10, bank. $10,000, yeah. Yeah. Somebody's going to have to pay the bank. It, that money's going to have to be accounted for at some point, sometime. <laughs> right? If not now, for sure later. Okay, so um, definitely an important number to know. 
So let's say the monthly rent the homeowner wants, and this is all stuff that the homeowner wants. This is from our negotiations with the homeowner. Let's say the homeowner wants $1,600 a month. Actually, let's change that. Let's just go with this. $1,700 a month. All right, so I'm going to put that there. Now I know enough to really start getting some answers. Okay. So I want to fill out now the tenant buyer side. I, I, I can find all this property information on Zillow or on uh, PropStream or something, rent, rental meter. But the seller side information, this is, this is from the guts call. This is where I got the information here, the guts phone call I had. Okay. Now, a lot of times in the guts phone call, we're going to need to get off the phone. That first conversation, we're going to have to get off the phone and say, Hey, listen, I'm, 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 I'm very interested. I'm going to need a little research time here. Can I call you back in a couple hours and make an offer? And when I call you back in a couple hours and make an offer, what happens? Okay. You set up a second phone call because Although you could find all this information on Zillow or, or whatever, and, and you found out all this information on the phone with the homeowner, you still need to do your math and figure out kind of what the score is over here for the profit margins and the tenant buyer and all that, right? So you might need to set up, set up a second phone call. And during that, during that time in between phone calls, you're going to want to come over here and fill something out like this and kind of get a grasp on what the numbers are. All right. So let's go through here now and figure out what the tenant buyer price is. What would I sell this house to, to the tenant buyer? What would be my asking price for the tenant buyer? Anybody? How would I figure that up? Here's an equation that I put here. Justin, are you staying in the middle or are you assigning it? That's a good question. Yeah. I'm probably going to assign this one. Let's just make it simple and assign this one. And then maybe we can come back to this form and do a, uh, actually, I've got a different form for sandwiches. Okay. So, uh, a different chart like this for sandwiches. So we'll, we'll do sandwiches uh, after this or another time, but let's, so let's assume we're assigning this. <clears throat> good question. So how would I figure out the tenant buyer's price? I got all this math to do. How do I start? Somebody help me out. I wrote it down for you here. Here's the equation, but, but talk me through it. And then somebody grab a calculator and actually do the math for me. Would you, would you help me out? Come on, help me out now. I'm trying to, I joined this club so I could, somebody could help me out. And I need somebody to help me out. How do I figure out this price here? What's the first thing I do? Looking at the appreciation. Okay. It says fair market value. What's fair market value? 225,000. So grab, yeah. grab your calculator, right? 225,000. Now it says, it says fair market value plus the appreciation times term. Okay. So we need to do, if you follow the rules of algebra, we'll need to do the equations inside parentheses first. So what's, what's the term and the appreciation? Well, the term is 36 months. That's three years. And here's the appreciation 4%, right? So would it go up 12% in 36 months? Is that a safe guess? Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's a safe guess. So the appreciation four times three, okay. Three, three, three years. Cause we're talking wow. about annual. We're talking about annual appreciation here. So it's not 36. It's three, right? Three years is 36 months. So the appreciation 4% or, or four times three. So we're talking about 12% over, over this term appreciation. 
So what's fair market value plus 12%? 27,000, I get. Okay. So let me write this down here. I've got the math that leads me to $252,000. All right. Yep. Okay. Right? Does everybody understand how I came to that? Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. The tenant buyer option fee potential. Now, this is my payday, right? We're starting to talk about payday now. So the tenant buyer price minus the seller's price plus down payment. Okay. <laughs> Let's walk through it. What's the tenant buyer's price? Two hundred fifty-two thousand. Two hundred fifty. Seller price. Right. Minus the seller's price. What's the seller's asking price? Two forty. Two forty. Two hundred forty. Okay. So we're going to do two hundred fifty-two thousand. Twelve. Minus two hundred forty thousand. Twelve thousand. That's going to equal twelve thousand. Right. But wait, I'm not done with the equation. I got to add the down payment. 3,500. Why am I adding the 3,500 here? Somebody please help me out. Why am I not subtracting it? Why am I adding it here? Because you want to net 12,000. Because I don't want to pay the 3,500 out of my 12,000. I want to get that money out of the tenant buyer too, if I can. True or false? Yes. True. True. Okay. So what's 12,000 plus 3,500? 15, 15, 15, 15, 500. Okay. So that's what that is. That's the 15,500. Let me clean it up a little bit here and then move it around. Okay. All right, so that's our potential tenant buyer's option fee potential. That's our potential paychecks here, sitting here, All right? Now we'll have to we'll have to get some down payment money. We'll have to pay still out of that, right? The thirty five hundred we accounted for, but we should be shooting for this. We should be shooting for this. Now, tenant buyer rent, fair market rent. What are we talking about here? Fair market rent. Well, fair market rent is sixteen fifty, but the monthly rent that the seller wants is seventeen hundred. Is that relatively close enough? Yeah. To fair, to fair market rent. Yeah. Yeah, it's relatively close enough to fair market rent that I can totally, most definitely go with seventeen hundred a month. Not a problem. So in this particular case, the seller gets everything that he wants based on the property data that I got and my math, I can still make $12,000. So let's figure up our option profits. How do I figure that up? Collected tenant buyer option fee. Now, remember up here, this is speculation, man. This 15, five oh. minus 3,500, that's, oh. spe that's speculation. So I don't know what it's going to be until I collect a check from a tenant buyer, right? Once I collect some money from a tenant buyer, now I can really start doing the real math because I've got real numbers to work with. Or once a tenant buyer tells me, hey, I've got $15,000 I can put into this starting right now. Okay, wonderful. Now I know i got 15000 to work with. Until then, this is all speculation. I can make these kind of pos. I'm shooting for these numbers right here. Yep. All right. So let's assume we collected 15,500 out of our tenant buyer though. Okay. Let's assume we collected the 15,500 out of our tenant buyer. 
minus the down payment that we owe of thirty five hundred minus the arrears, which there are none in this case, thank goodness, minus any agreed to repairs. I didn't agree to any because we didn't have any. So we're good. That is my total option assignment profits, which in this case is $12,000. Does that make sense? Um, so when there's a repairs and when there's a rares, we add that to the, um, to the 15, uh, hundreds, to the 15,000, right? Well, so, we could, still, so, so we still can make, um, I mean, yeah, you could, you know, you could, you could add it in and have your tenant buyer pay a lot, of, a lot of this, or you could just have it eat into your option fee, you know, Let, let's assume here, let's assume the arrears were, let's assume the arrears were 10,000, like we were saying before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That changes the deal significantly. Yeah. All right. Because the, and now the tenant buyer is going to bring 15,000, let's say, well, instead of getting 12, we're only going to get two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what if we had, what if we had the tenant buyer bring 25,000? So he brought 10 extra. Yeah. That's, is that, is that possible? Yeah. Sure. Why not? You're having them bring the, the down payment. Why not have them bring the arrears? Okay. However, let me say this for the record. There's only so much you can squeeze in on a deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he may be bringing the money, but that, that again is cash that he had that you're not getting. Okay, so there's only so much you can squeeze in on any deal. Now, if, if this were really the deal where it had 10,000 in arrears, I, I would have to say, no, thank you. Not at this price. Not at this price. Mm -hmm. Okay, because this is this is what it's worth, and you're already ten grand behind. How about this? I'll give you, I'll give you what you owe for the place, and I'll catch up the arrears. But that's that's the deal. You get to walk. I get a house, and you get to walk. See, that would be that would be more like my approach if this ten thousand were really sitting here in arrears. Okay. Does everybody understand why I'm saying that? Mm -hmm. Okay.